Morris's own Sarai. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Look at me, you guys. Didn't think I was going to win this, did you? Hello. Everyone's very quiet in here. Why is this so awkward? Come on, England. You're better than this. All right. What do we have? Do we have some questions around here if you're a new champ? Hello, champ. It's uh, Scott Foster. It's great to see you back on top where you belong. Yeah. Can you talk to us about your story and just what an amazing life to speak to you? And also all the kind of physical rehabilitation you'll have had to have gone through. Yeah. And getting back in the ring. Yeah. Just give us a play for the hype here. Yeah. I'm, I'm not just going to say it just because he's sitting right beside me, but you have no idea how much he's helped me in my comeback and just believing in me and being like, listen, we're going to go look at your neck and we're going to see it. And if it's a hundred percent, then I'm backing you hundred percent, you know, and it was, and it was just wonderful. And you know, the, he didn't give me this straight away, you know, and I'm thankful for that because we got to tell stories and have fun and do outcasts. And it's the most fun I've ever had. Like me, Tony and Ruby together, we have a great time and we're enjoying it every single week. And we love everything that he's been doing for us. And it's just, Absolutely incredible, and I'm appreciative, you know, that I got this moment here in the UK, and it's awesome having my whole family here. Like, you, you know, we've got Queen and everything. I was like, bloody hell! But uh, yeah, I was really, it was just really, really cool, and just the process of it. I never thought I was ever going to wrestle again. That was it. They said you will never wrestle again. WWE cut ties with any kind of doctors and was like, we're not going to check you anymore. So I was kind of in limbo for five years. And I never kind of hit rock bottom with it, with no pun intended for the wrestling fans in here, but I never like hit rock bottom with it. I kept in a very positive mindset. And so, you know, when I got the call from Tony, he was just like, let's fucking go. Let's try this. Let's, let's go do, you know, he, he was like, just, he just seemed so positive and awesome. And I was like, man, I want to kick some ass, you know? And so, yeah, I started training more, getting in the gym. I was working out every single day. I started watching AEW religiously every single day. I was like, this is so cool. And I already wanted to be a part of it so bad ever since it started anyway. But um, yeah, it's just been a crazy journey. I never thought I'd be here. I never thought I would be in Wembley Stadium in the biggest crowd in wrestling history. I mean, it's just a dream come true, and I'm so thankful, and thank you, Tony. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, you earned it, you. champ. Thank you. It's one year in the making thank since you. you came. And also, I want to get back to America. I'm going to start talking some crap, so. <laughs> Not on you. On the people. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Raya. Over here. Let's get a bit of for love here. How Hi, Rob. How are you? Rob? How How are you? Yeah, well, I've got to ask about your family, because... Oh, that was yeah. an incredible moment. Everyone watching, we've had loads of texts into the BBC about having to say how much everyone was loving it. How good was that to have mum, dad, cousins, nephews, yeah. brothers? Well, they've never, they were never given the opportunity in in the past to be showcased ever. Like they were never acknowledged, and I wasn't allowed to ignore, acknowledge them until the movie came out, and then it was kind of I was allowed to. But the thing is, is that. Tony, again, didn't even question it. He was just like, let's fucking go. Yeah. Like, yeah, we can have your family. And they, they appreciated it so much. And my dad was so emotional. My dad's not a crier. He's a very rough around the edges kind of guy, you know, missing teeth because of all the fighting back in the day. You know, you know how he is. But he was crying his eyes out in the ring. It was just such a special moment to be around my family. And yeah, it was, they loved every single second of it. My nephew's in here still, still I think. Is he not? Well, he wasn't here, yeah. <laughs> Ricky Knight Jr. I don't know if you guys know him or not, but he's an incredible, incredible wrestler. He just wrestled Zack Sabre Jr. this weekend at Rev Pro. He's going to be the next big thing for sure. Hello. Hi, hi guys. Luca hi. from uh, Cultura Pop Italy, from Italy. Hi, Italy. Yeah. And my question is for Tony and for Serena. Uh, Mercedes Monet was shown several times during the venue. It is something, it's this at this, maybe for a match in the future, we have a lot of history. If I may, if I may, she's not cleared Mercedes Monet. So I think it was great to have her here. She last, she competed for New Japan Pro Wrestling. So I thought it would be uh, excellent to have one of the top international stars in all of pro wrestling here. And uh, the last time we saw Mercedes Monet compete, she was actually competing against Earl Willow Nightingale. And uh, there's a lot of exciting international pro wrestling. I thought it would be great to have her here to see all the matches, including the AEW Women's World Championship. But she's not cleared uh, since her injuries. I just thought it would be good to have her take in the show. Uh, definitely a lot of potential things could happen there. And I know uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling's had great experiences working with her. And I thought it would be great, given that she's not cleared, but wanted to take in the biggest paid pro wrestling crowd of all time and see what AEW's all about. I thought it would be good for her to be here. Uh, but obviously she's not wrestling or cleared or doing anything uh, anytime soon, but I, uh, you know, great to have the top uh, international stars at a top international show. And of course, 
uh, for the world champion here. Uh, oh, yeah. There's all kinds of people who want to take a shot at you. That's right, bring it on. I, I, I saw her and I was like, okay, so she's going to be watching. Great. We, we already have history, right? So I, I wanted to win the championship in front of her, honestly. Because <laughs> I know if she ever was to ever come in, she's going to try and get this, right? So I say absolutely bring it on. And Mercedes, if you're watching this, we, we can't wait for you to finally join us, if you will. Wow. Right? Very. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Big challenge. Yeah. Hi, Jack Hawkins, GoldenHawk.com. As you obviously saw with you and Jeremy Stone and Bosch in the Mastermind. I'm very disappointed in her, yes. And Ruby got involved as well. Just wondering what is the immediate state of the outcast? Right now, I think once I get back to America, I mean, we have to go straight to Chicago for Dynamite. But right now, she has upset me very much. And if she wants to get back in my good book, she literally has to apologize. She has to grovel at my feet. She has to kiss the ground that I walk on because she just tried to break my neck in the ring. So, next question. Uh, Jamal and I are seconds out. How did it feel to be walking down that ramp, seeing all the phones, seeing everyone cheering your name, mm -hmm. and then to lift the gold at the end of the match? Yeah. All the emotions coming out, all the whole journey that's led you to that moment. What was that like? Well, for, for some reason, I, I was like, they're gonna boo me, right? And I started because I've, I've been, you know, a bit naughty back in America with my character, with the outcasts and stuff, you know. So I was like, maybe they'll boo me and I can like lean into it, but I got a good reaction. So I'm like, well, I can't really do too much, you know, bad stuff. But it was really amazing. Like, to re you, you don't understand that you're walking down the ramp and just seeing a sea of people and it's just like, it never ends either. You're like, oh my gosh. And the fact that it's Wembley Stadium again in my home country, it's just, it's really, really cool to see because being in Wembley and everyone just assuming we weren't gonna do even quarter of it. And then within a couple of days, there was over 70,000. It just felt so good. And the fact that we, you know, got over 80, 81, 85. Hey, there were 81 pay. There were like 90,000 people approximately in the building. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely bananas. So just like actually trying to take it in and it's really difficult to take it in as well. You're just like, oh my gosh. It's the most amazing experience of my life. And it's definitely right there in the top of my of my favorite moments and favorite championship 100 percent i'm so excited it's amazing and uh i have to say it was an amazing night i did, personally knowing that you were going to be coming out to queen we will yeah. rock you <laughs> yeah, yeah. and knowing that you were coming out with your entire family i was pretty confident that you were not going to get booed tonight yeah yeah <laughs> i was like i hope not jeez coming out tonight i feel like you're, british people can't be disappointed if they hate, hate queen in the crowd that's for sure that was a good one yeah. for sure it was a great idea it was a great idea it was her idea yeah it was, it was, I was like, can i get it <laughs> he's like let's do it it was great yeah it's awesome uh, Max Grumman from Headlock in Germany. Um, you've been talking about Rev Pro quite a bit. Um, Ricky Mach Jr. Um, Pack defined his title there. We saw Chris Jericho yesterday attack that we lost at the show. Um, so they have a working relationship with New Japan. You know, um, is there any kind of official working relationship between AW and Rev Pro? And how about the other major promotions in the UK and uh, like Progress or that was in Germany? I really like Andy a lot, and I've attended Rev Pro and I've worked with them, and I've tried to feature their clips in the show. So I would say, yeah, we absolutely have a working relationship with Andy and Rev Pro. You know, we're both great partners to New Japan Pro Wrestling, I believe. Uh, I've attended a lot of Rev Pro even before there was an AEW. I consider Andy a friend, and I like to help out my friends in the wrestling business. And that means if somebody can make an appearance there and it's not going to affect our schedule or change anything detrimental for AEW, I love working with Rev Pro. And obviously, uh, for Soraya to have family there, for us to have so many people that are part of AEW or people uh, to have a pipeline to AEW, I think it's a great thing. So I support Andy, and I've even, when I've had a chance, featured Rev Pro clips in AEW television just to show uh, their company off and show some of our stars wrestling for them. That's awesome. Yeah, I would love to do stuff with Rev Pro, of course. I saw Sky Blue, actually. Got to be a part of the show yesterday, and she got a great reaction. People absolutely adore her, so I was a little jealous, honestly. I was like, I want to do Rev Pro too, but <laughs> we, were, we were here. Unfortunately, I had to do some Wembley stuff, you know? <laughs> it, worked it worked out pretty well, yeah, but that's... Awesome. Definitely something to keep an eye on. It's, it, we have a good relationship with them. It's a, it's a good company. I was glad that they had their record weekend uh, as part of this huge weekend, the biggest weekend ever in wrestling. And mm -hmm. I was glad to see other people getting the benefit of that. That's nice. And uh, Rep Pro is a great company, absolutely.